thank you for a nice introduction. Um, I would also like to give my thanks to uh, David Butler, uh, Stephen Weeks, and everyone at the Knoxville Museum of Art. I would like to thank uh, Sam Yates, now an old friend, and the University of Tennessee for bringing me here. Um, I would also like to give my special thanks to Dan Mills, the curator of the exhibition, uh, and his former, uh, his former co colleagues at the Summit Art Gallery at McNeil University in Pennsylvania. They have invested a tremendous amount of uh, time and energy into this project. I hope you all get to see the catalog. So, um, well, this is really my first kind of uh, uh, survey show, a 15-year survey, and I always feel a little bit nervous to think about um, having some kind of retrospective. I think it's perhaps too early, I'm not ready for it. But uh, however, maybe the, the show will give me a chance to sort of pause and look back, to reflect on myself and maybe to move forward. So I would like to say uh, a few things about my overall approach and my um, ideas uh, on art. Uh, there's not a linear development uh, in my work. Uh, I will start a theme um, and work intensively on it for a while. Uh, and produce a series of paintings. And um, then I may have a new idea and start something different. Uh, but later I would revisit an old subject and expand it. So one thing leads to another, and I sort of move back and forth. Uh, never seem to make much progress. Um, what I hope is maybe over the years, uh, my work will grow like a tree, or maybe a web-like kind of structure or web like kind of uh, uh, system uh, linked by conceptual threads. Um, I don't feel like I'm in any sense a revolutionary. I don't want to give up painting for installation or video. I don't want to give up the figurative for the abstract. I don't want to give up the political for the uh, cultural or historical. I don't want to give up sincerity or beauty for irony. And I want all of this in my work. I think a good work of art should be a complex, um, maybe a system that could generate uh, layers of meaning. And that's my hope. So anyway, I'm going to walk through a um, series of uh, uh, works that I've done over the years. Uh, hopefully to give a context, to provide context for the exhibition. And I'll also share with you some recent projects that I've done up to 2008. Um, beyond the, uh, the period of the exhibition. Um, I would like to always like to ce celebrate this moment in uh, 1988 when I graduated from Tsinghua University with a degree in architecture. I decided to switch to painting instead. So uh, after I graduated, I took a trip to a uh, rural um, area in uh, Hunan province in China. I did a lot of sketches and this is one of the drawings I did uh, based on one of the sketches uh, on the trip. And uh, so for lack of a, a good self-portrait, I kind of use it as a, more or less a self-portrait, uh, reflecting my mood at that time. You know, I've, I've been uh, making architectural drawings for five years and wasn't very happy. Wanted to do something um, freer. Next, please. So in 93, I, uh, when I was a graduate student, I started my first, um, what, what I think maybe a uh, more mature body of work, the library series. And then later, a little bit later, I'll start the Chinese library series. And then uh, almost 10 years later, uh, the museum libraries. So uh, the theme sort of, uh, you know, get revisited and expanded uh, over the years. Next. <coughs> I kind of see book as a material form uh, of something abstract, or a container of something abstract. Maybe ideology, maybe uh, you know, philosophy, uh, memory, or history. And so uh, when I was wandering in the narrow aisles of a library, um, I look up and I'm confronted by this wall of books. Um, and the spines sometimes uh, don't give too much hint on the content or author. 
So uh, this appears to be lockers, to be something that is hard to penetrate. And it's that kind of distance that uh, interests me. I, I wasn't so much interested in the idea of book as you know, a symbol of knowledge, a way to respect, uh, something didactic like that. Um, I, I wanted a kind of uh, a cool kind of distance to it. So uh, the first group of uh, library paintings are almost all black and white, based on photographs. And um, they are sort of geometric. And uh, maybe they reflect a kind of architectural uh, quality, uh, which I have been trying so hard to get away from. So uh, this is library number seven. Uh, it's about uh, 60 some inches long, uh, 40 inches high. Um, the first painting I did, uh, the first of library, my, my library series, is in the exhibition. That small study, black and white study. Next. So uh, in the winter of 94, I got a chance to visit China. So I visited Chinese libraries. And uh, you know, Chinese books are a lot, straight bound books are a lot softer. You don't stand them up on the shelves. So you stack them up on the bookshelves instead. And uh, so this is a stack of old Chinese straight, straight bound books. You can see that the edges have been eaten away by worms living in these caves and uh, um, uh, pockets. And uh, there's uh, these zigzag lines on the edge of the book. That's formed by ink marks that have been printed to walk all the way to the edge of the book, all the to the way to the edge of uh, each page. So they form a, a, a dot on the end. Um, for me, they look kind of like sound waves. Next. Like we know before, a little bit bigger, uh, 40 by 54 inches painted on wood. And uh, so sometimes as I crop the composition, um, it could become rather abstract. Uh, people tell me that this is, so looks kind of like a landscape reflection in the water and so on, which I did not quite intend. Um, next. Okay, I'm sorry. <laughs> okay. uh, and just, you know, to give you a, a, a an example of how I would uh, continue the series over the years. This is uh, Chinese Library number 42, and it's about 60 inches long. Uh, a very recent painting. Uh, a very recent painting. Um, so uh, most of my paintings are more photorealistic, but in this one, the recent paintings, I wanted to emphasize the linear quality. If you look very uh, close on the original painting, you'll be able to see visible brush lines, uh, kind of I hope it's something that references um, traditional Chinese landscape painting, like how rocks are painted. Next. Um, Chinese library number uh, 45, it's like 80 inches long. So the painting process uh, becomes more visible. And uh, one thing about the library paintings, I mean, including books and newspapers, uh, I didn't want to uh, arrange the object, um, like in a still life painting, where the artist would arrange the objects, uh, you know, based on kind of idea or composition, and then paint from that setup. Um, I usually would carry a camera uh, into the library and find whatever librarians left on the shelves. So it is a farm composition, uh, not uh, an arranged one, a designed one. Okay. Next. So uh, later on, I got to, I got to visit uh, the uh, li library and archives of the Museum of Modern Art in New York. Uh, their facility there was in Queens. And uh, I took a bunch of pictures, but I didn't pick it up until much later. So in 2005, I started to make this group of works called the MoMA Libraries. And uh, so this time, uh, in my previous book paintings, uh, su uh, the subject, I mean titles are not, the subject is not so specific, it's just a book in general. But uh, in this group, um, there is a specific context. Uh, the content is uh, books of modern art. So uh, I don't know that has some uh, that has a, the subject has some influence on the way I, I paint uh, these images. Um, anyway, this group tend to be more architectural. Uh, some of them are rather uh, minimal. 
and they're always kind of cold and uh, geometric. Um, I remember the kind of cool atmosphere in the institution of fluorescent lights, metal shelves, and very clean uh, uh, folios and, and uh, boxes, archive boxes. Next. Um, I also sometimes uh, try smaller paintings um, in a more painterly manner. So this is a two by three feet painting based on an image from, taken from the uh, Metropolitan Museum of Art Library. Uh, you can see you know, visible strokes and wash in the background. And there's a, a bright yellow wash as the undercoat. Next. Um, in uh, 2008, uh, 2009, I painted a group of uh, paintings based on images taken in the Los Angeles Public Library. And so the, the collection in each library is always a little different, affecting a uh, subtly the way I paint. So this, um, this picture, there's bright uh, colors uh, floating in a, uh, an atmospheric field of gray. Next. Back to the MoMA library. Uh, I think some of these are actually, they're kind of like abstract paintings, um, geometric abstraction, but um, uh, it's also photo, sort of related to photorealism. I mean, that label, the, the white box, the white uh, rectangle that glows against a dark, cool black. Uh, when I was uh, looking at that photo, I was thinking about uh, Mark Lothko paintings. Next. Um, these paintings appear to be almost monochromatic, uh, but there are different gray shades uh, with very subtle color tendencies. So this is the largest piece in a series on my library. Um, it's uh, 100 inches high and 64 inches wide. Uh, the, the boxes have a clear reference to minimalism. Next. And um, back to the um, Los Angeles Public Library, I painted uh, a few pieces um, of um, musical scores. And uh, when I think of music, you know, the idea of repetition and rhythm and, uh, you know, uh, a kind of emotional atmosphere, uh, seem, all these things, these elements seem to get into my painting. Uh, these are. Uh, musical scores by the Norwegian composer Edvard Grieg. Next. Uh, the Creation by Haydn or Hayden. Uh, fairly large paintings, almost abstract, showing the spine of these uh, this, uh, uh, leather folders. And um, I always love the, the Chase's um, organization left by librarian. The uh, you know uh, labels they put on it, uh, writing you know numbers. Uh, sometimes old label peel off, uh, new labels and put on it. Um, I like the process of categorization and organization. It reflects a rational kind of thinking, which is so interesting to me. Next, and uh, so this recent painting of uh, the. Uh, the creation by Hayden. Um, is now, now that I look back at it, at, 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 uh, I think it's, it looks very much like my early library painting. This is library number two uh, from 1994. So you know, more than 10 years apart. Um, okay. So uh, when I was uh, starting to paint books, I was also interested in the visual interpretation of history, of historical events. And uh, so I, I started doing installation, uh, you know, mostly installation of paintings, perhaps paintings uh, with jo uh, plus drawings. Um, I did it uh, from 94 to 99, and I continue to do some of those. This is an installation, an early installation in the exhibition called Flags and Banners, A Century of Student Movements in China. Uh, it's from 1994. And uh, you know, the student movement I experienced as a student in Beijing happened in 89, which left me a very profound influence. 
um, the images are taken from uh, historical documents, uh, documentary photographs um, in various periods of uh, uh, Chinese history, from the uh, May the Fourth Movement in 1919 to uh, the Cultural Revolution, which started as a student movement uh, in the 60s, um, and then you know other movements in the 80s and uh, Tiananmen in uh, 1989. Uh, I did not give a, uh, any kind of chronological order to these images. I pretty much arranged them in a grid. And uh, so what I wanted to emphasize is the similarity between these uh, movements, uh, how they get started and how it developed and uh, had a tragic ending. And uh, I want to emphasize the kind of vulnerability and the idealism of uh, young Chinese students. So it's not a piece specifically about Tiananmen, although people look at it now thought that you know, it's about Tiananmen. Uh, next. The images are painted on thick, um, a, a thick red undercoat applied over wood panels. And so each wood panel has a considerable side. It's about uh, three inches wide, um, which casts a, a warm reddish glow on the surrounding wall. Um, another installation we also in the exhibition related to uh, Chinese history is called Order of the Red Gods. Uh, the image painted on a hanging scroll uh, is based on a uh, black and white photograph uh, of an interior of a library during the Cultural Revolution when a large uh, variety of books were destroyed uh, by the Red Gods. So you got this heap of damaged books uh, on the floor and uh, as the, uh, the scroll uh, unloads, it continues on to the, uh, the viewer's space. The hand scroll is punctuated by um, this grid of uh, steel, uh, plate, uh, steel plates. And uh, each uh, steel plate uh, has a spike that uh, penetrates the joint and go into the wall. Um, I use automobile paint um, on top of uh, the steel plate, you know, I want the material to be something industrial, modernist, uh, something cold. So this, um, some people look at this and, and uh, the red squares remind them of, um, of the little red books, you know, mouse quotation, have you seen one of those? It was uh, so popular during that time. It, it's the guidance for uh, idea political ideology and almost everything else in daily life. It was almost like the only correct book at that time. Um, but uh, besides uh, revoking the idea of, uh, of the red book, I also wanted to reference modernism, you know, modernist or industrial kind of aesthetics, to present these conflicts of uh, tradition and um, uh, modernism. Um, so the piece, I think, I wanted to question the idea of revolution as a form of progress. Next. Um, so uh, another installation I did, well, this is actually an earlier one. It's a nocturne burning of books by the Nazis. When I was watching a documentary film about Nazi Germany, I could never forget the scenes of book burning. Um, so I wanted to make a piece about it. Um, and um, let it be about something maybe more general, the destruction of culture and how uh, you know, everything uh, changes uh, over time. Uh, this is a small model I made uh, before uh, setting out to do the, the real installation. It's about uh, one, by, one by two and a half feet uh, a foam board. Uh, pretending to be gallery wall sitting on a wood table top. Uh, it looks like a gallery wood floor. So um, I wanted to use like, you know, small paintings of books flying in the air uh, on top of a um, large drawing depicting the fire stake uh, taken from the documentary film. And this time it's a, a random kind of composition. Uh, those are grommets pushed into the foam board. Next. Then another configuration is more theatrical, it's like an altarpiece, um, which is a, a, a 
almost a quasi-religious undertone. Um, and it also has a, a, a destructive elements, uh, those nails, big nails. I use copy text for those. Again, it's a very small model. Next. And this is the real installation uh, I did in 1995, um, still in graduate school. Uh, the installation is composed of three large joints, each about nine by six feet. Um, six little paint, paintings of flying books framed in gold and um, a grid of railroad spikes that penetrate the joints and go into the wall. Next. So uh, in each painting, um, the light source seems to come from the center of the installation, which is the um, fire stack. And I wanted to have a reference to Barlow painting in these small uh, color pictures. Uh, I use thick impasto paint on the highlights and use uh, layers of glazes to give a glowing effect. Next. Um, if you look carefully uh, on the drawings, um, they, are, uh, they have a rough texture. I use house painting roller to apply large area uh, colors and I use big brushes, uh, thick acrylic paint. I apply, uh, I, I use the same paper to sand down the wash and the paint so to reveal the texture of the paper. And I didn't cut the edge of that of, the, of those uh, paper. I actually sand it and sand it against a sharp edge to, to do the cut. So the, on the edge and on the surface of the paper, you realize the material, uh, which I think is very important, particularly for this piece. It's, uh, you know, paper, uh, book pages, fire, uh, book burning, and so on. Next. These are the detailed rusty railroad spikes. Um, I mean, they don't really go into a wall, even a big hole. I, 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 make, I use a, a finished nail, stick into it instead. So it's all illusion, but it's very convincing. Next. Uh, so later on, I, I look at the preparatory uh, photographs I took for those little paintings. Uh, and uh, I, I thought that uh, the images themselves, if they are taken out of uh, the narrative, could perhaps mean something more general. You know, books fly in the air uh, with warm light coming from underneath. It's, uh, it feels like, you know, uh, ideas. Or, uh, you know, knowledge or, or human memory being tested in the extension of time and space. So this, I think, it's a meditative quality to it. So I ended up doing. Uh, I mean, the the, the Norton installation was uh, uh, completed in '95, and then in '98, um, I uh, made the first series photograph, and then in 2007, uh, I rent a uh, professional f photo studio uh, to take these pictures. And so this is a grid of uh, uh, color photographs uh, of books flying in the air. It's kind of hard to see. So in the exhibition, we have a group of modern books. And so I, I chose to show a group of Chinese, old Chinese books. Okay, next. So uh, from books to newspapers, um, I, I started printing stacks of newspapers in uh, 98. You know, I'm interested in newspaper because it's, uh, it's a mundane object that you uh, don't really, uh, I mean, you may flip through uh, pages of an issue and you don't really stare at it or keep it, right? Uh, pretty much they get recycled pretty quickly. Uh, so it's a sort of a, a transitory kind of object. Um, and the, but the information contained in newspaper is just amazing from uh, you know, big events and tragedies to smaller uh, events in daily life. Uh, you get uh, birth announcements, uh, obituaries, stock market columns in the paper. It's all encompassing in daily life. So, uh, so uh, again, the, my my approach is to, to find an existing stack on a shelf of a library, kind of stored and uh, saved. Um, uh, this is the first newspaper painting I did. 
uh, it's entitled May 1998, and the title always refers to the period of time uh, of that particular stack of paper. It's in exhibition, very small, uh, 30 by 60 inches. Uh, this is uh, from probably 2001, uh, a stack of Chinese newspaper in Shanghai. Sometimes the stacks are seen from the back, uh, as if uh, you know, these two stacks, uh, kind of one, one month is slightly different from the other, from another. Next. So this I, I see as sort of more um, still life like monochromatic, quieter paintings. As if you know, um, everything, uh, time passes by, everything fades away. So in 2001, remember in the, in the summer, uh, I started to uh, zoom in and take uh, close-up pictures of uh, stacks of newspapers with uh, legible texts and news photos. And um, so that becomes, later become a, a larger group of work uh, called fragmentary views, you know, paintings of stacked newspapers. Next. So I remember my first few images came from earlier uh, 2001. As I was working on them, uh, then 9 11 happened. Then I got this sense of urgency. Uh, things were happening quickly during that time, and people pay such close attention to the, to the news media. And uh, it was a very psychologically very intense period of time. And at that time, I feel like my, uh, my idea uh, became clearer and I, uh, my pace uh, gets faster. I was working very hard, uh, trying to take pictures of newspaper stack um, quite often, and then I keep make, making such paintings. So this painting is uh, um, from, entitled September 2001, uh, JT, as it stands for Johannesburg Times, because this paper has been nailed all the way from South Africa, I believe. Uh, they are crumpled. That's why these images are distorted. The top image, can you, can you figure out there is a, a partial picture of uh, ground zero of helmets? And uh, if you look at the little painting, you'll be able to see like NYPD, NYFD, uh, the, the New York Fire Department, or the uh, Police Department. Uh, so the juxtaposition of text and images are, uh, are accidental. However, I found them on the shelves of a library. Next. A stack of um, weekend issues. Uh, from the label librarians put on, you might be able to, to read that uh, they, they are seven days apart. So these are weekend, thick weekend issues, allowing more uh, pictures to show on the edge. Uh, perfect for my subject. And so uh, uh, you know, the, the Afghan war was going on at the time. So uh, at this point, I feel like I was able to combine all my interest uh, in my previous work, my interest in the uh, memory and documentation of history, uh, I mean the theme of library, my interest in uh, the interpretation of historical events, uh, in the narrative elements of art, uh, all these things into one single painting. And I feel like it's uh, perhaps a, a kind of my version of history painting. It's a kind of a, a, comp a compressed history, or condensed history, or a, you know, fragmented, fragmentary view of history, or it could even be sort of a microscopic view of history, where when you're looking at these small texts and, and uh, details from certain days. Next. Um, and I uh, work very intensively um, during the Iraq war, uh, follow the event development of the, the war very closely. So this is March to April 2003, LT, London Times. Uh, and sometimes I did uh, occasionally move an issue here uh, um, to, to sort of change the look of it to a certain degree, if I'm allowed to do that at the library. So uh, for this painting, uh, the top image, we have a forest of 
hands and arms of uh, Iraqi civilians reaching out for relief materials. I think for me that's a, a dramatic, uh, a powerful image uh, of struggling and, and suffering. And uh, underneath you see military uh, uh, equipment, um, the, the day and night bombing of Baghdad. This is uh, 60 by 86 inches. Another piece on Iraq War, uh, 60 by 100 inches. I always remember this bigger pieces. Next. This is, I believe, from 2004. It's a New Orleans paper. And it's, you can always find some uh, really disturbing stuff um, in the process of painting. Sometimes I would find a paragraph describing detail of a murder case. Um, where in, in this picture, uh, there's a paragraph about a corruption case. You know, <laughs> so all kinds of things going on. Next. And I also uh, paint uh, Chinese newspapers. Um, from the top, you see high rises. It's about the uh, urban explosion in China. These big dark characters. Uh, Below it uh, says poison rice found in few markets. Uh, and then there's a picture of, of uh, government propaganda against Falun Gong, the religious group, uh, propaganda about the, the upcoming uh, Olympic Games. And then uh, at the bottom, uh, reports about uh, a fire in which uh, 13 young children died. So it's big and uh, small things, um, indeed a, a kind of a microscopic view of uh, social life. In the, in the middle, those red big characters is the, the 80th anniversary of the uh, founding of Chinese Communist Party, you know, big daily news. This is about uh, 80 some inches tall. Uh, this is a recent painting from 2010, from last year. Um, reflecting the um, major events in 2008. And you can see the, the bunch of uh, Olympic game pictures. Uh, juxtaposed with daily life, you know, rain in a uh, uh, nice scene in the city. Uh, the lower left corner, uh, the big character is rain. So I wanted to, it's, I was in deliberate about including it, you know, fire and rain, or fire and water. Next. Um, this is a, a, a long piece, a skinny piece. Um, also a stack of newspapers from Guangzhou. And uh, uh, the news, as you can recognize, range from the Chinese astronaut, um, the, the Sichuan earthquake in, two, in May 2008. And then underneath those big characters, uh, New York, London, Frankfurt, Paris, stock market, big downfall. So there's the economic downturn. And then Google in the corner. At that time, nothing had happened yet, but Google was a, pre a presence in the country. And then the, uh, and some text suggests uh, various news like the stock market and certain uh, local happenings. So these are all quotidian uh, images, uh, things that I didn't make up, things that I, 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 I borrow from the news media. Okay, I'm going to, because each painting is usually is a, a, a close-up view of a certain step, and it's it's like how we perceive the uh, the world or world events. Uh, through the media. You get little bits of information here and there, never get a full picture. And a lot of times, uh, this report might be, uh, might not be objective, uh, literally walked, perhaps. Um, so I wanted to give you a, a quick sequence of details, or of details about faces in my newspaper paintings. Go.
Okay, so uh, just want to edit the images a little different. Um, so the, uh, in 2008, I had a, a different ideas to deal with um, the complexity of information one gets from the news media. So I started a, a series of paintings called Both Sides Now. Uh, in these paintings, it appears that the back side, the images in text from on the back, back side of the paper, have bled over to the front. And so you get an almost transparent view of both sides of the newspaper, as if you hold up a sheet of paper against light to the window. And so, um, so I will usually find uh, a section of newspaper, and then uh, walk on the back side first. I use uh, Photoshop and Illustrator to process the information to simplify it. And then I connect uh, the computer to a vinyl cutting plotter or a vinyl cutting machine to make a stencil for it. And then I will paint the, the back side first, put a layer of wash over it, and then walk on the front side while contouring the, 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 the thickness of the paint, allowing, you know, let it be thin, allowing the back side to show through. So can you see uh, on top the news sort of run, uh, runs backward, and then some lines, uh, you know, cutting across the picture. You see a little head there, floating there. There's a politician on the back side, and then uh, advertising Omega was lower right. Um, so these paintings uh, are also quite time consuming. Next. Um, next. This is an installation view of my solo show at Zola Lieberman Gallery in Chicago in uh, May 2008. Um, I, um, I steal the title of a song, you know, Both Sides Now, uh, for, for my show. And so after uh, uh, from news images, I uh, try to um, walk directly from the news picture and, and let one painting just depict uh, you know, one scene, one news photo and I was wondering if it would still work. Uh, and um, in the past few years, I've been uh, spending more time uh, in China and, and try to participate in art scene there. So in the summer of 2005, uh, I was looking back at the traditional materials like uh, Chinese rice paper, Chinese ink and brushes. And I learned a little bit of Chinese traditional painting when I was a child, never received too much formal. Uh, it's training on it. Though. Then um, I wanted to uh, translate uh, news pictures, news photos into um, ink and wash, uh, which was not done very often and it was quite challenging to do because a news image has to be, a, a, a news photographic image has to be precise while uh, you know, the bleeding of ink and wash. Uh, tends to be very free and um, uh, painterly. So anyway, my result is, um, this is what I came up with. Um, I found a, uh, a ink resistant mineral, mineral solution uh, to apply on the highlights, the highlights area of a painting, and then wait until it dries and soak layers of ink wash from the back uh, to have to control form, to control uh, light and dark contrast. And uh, so in these paintings, there's an immediacy. Uh, ink paintings, you can't really uh, spend too much time playing with, with it. Once it's done, it, it's done. So I wanted immediacy to so conceptually parallel the, the fast pace of news photos you see in the media. Uh, this is from an older uh, historical uh, photograph in the early 50s, I think, showing the, uh, Mao and Zhou Enlai and Liu Shaoqi in a conference. <coughs> Next. Are they still kind of photographic? Uh, I mean, they're not like uh, traditional Chinese painting. Uh, the, the People's Great Hall is one of my favorite subjects. Uh, it's very common in the Chinese media. You see all kind of conferences, big deal meetings happening in that space. It's really like a big theater. One of the uh, uh, stack of newspaper paintings in the exhibition is a grayish one. Uh, one section depicts the interior of People's Great Hall, if you notice. And this is an painting depicting the same, the same uh, scene. So it's really a, a kind of a 
spectacle, uh, dramatic space. Next. Um, and I've been, uh, you, you can see that one of my earlier politician paintings in the exhibition, Chinese, untitled Chinese leaders in the 1980s, this big uh, six feet tall painting. Uh, that was probably my earliest painting of politicians. I've been interested in, in uh, images of politicians, their intense expressions, their the kind of facade they have, and uh, sometimes this air, almost an air of conspiracy, uh, when they have this kind of conference. Uh, this piece is in the catalog. It's, uh, it's get, you didn't get to uh, this be display in our space here. So it's a, it shows a group of um, Pakistani politicians in conference uh, while you know helping them. They're at UN uh, trying to help US to make a, a case for war in Iraq. Next, I want to stop a moment uh, to pay my respect to the. A great Spanish painter Goya, uh, who dared to paint the, the king and the, the queen, uh, rather ugly as they were. Next. And my, my Chinese fellow artists, um, who do a great job of uh, painting our leaders in oil and in ink. And so these are my references. And that's what I came up with my ink painting of Chinese leaders the speech. Can you see the, uh, go back just one second. Can you see between the, the, the mics uh, on the badge there is a um, hammer and sickle sign there? <laughs> okay, next. Uh, in my 207 show in um, Beijing, uh, it was a walk, my, my show of walks on paper, I staged this big uh, pile of uh, you know, like a, a, a pillar uh, using over one ton of newspaper to suggest that all these paintings are based on uh, images from the media. Next. And in the uh, winter of 2008, I uh, did a show called Ads and Scenes 2001 to 2007 at the Charles Coase Gallery. Um, I wanted to say something about the Iraq War. I wanted to say something about uh, the Bush administration before they stepped down. It was, it was during the, ele uh, the election season. So that's why I uh, put up that show at, 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 uh, at that time. All these paintings are based on news uh, images uh, from newspapers. And um, they sort of loosely construct a narrative about the Iraq war, from the pretext, you know, how they uh, drawn up for war, and aftermath. So this is an installation view showing uh, Bush cabinet's second term. And I'll share a little bit of how I start a painting, how it develops. Okay, here's the first stage. Next. Next. Finished painting. And uh, this, this, uh, these paintings in 2008, they're monochromatic and uh, they're less photorealistic but uh, you know, more painterly. Perhaps uh, my, my ink paintings have an uh, influence uh, on this. Um, Pentagon briefing uh, or the, the geometry uh, lesson based on a New York Times photo of uh, Rumsfeld and Tommy Franks uh, after a news briefing. And I simply imposed a uh, diagram over it. This is how you would construct a perfect pentagon using only geometric forms, geometric means. Um, I wanted this diagram to give this image a kind of a cold, a mechanical, and calculating character. And I, I used the vinyl cutter to do the, uh, the stencil for this diagram. Next. Uh, I also included scenes of war. Um, so this is a, a Black Hawk surrounded by uh, curious Iraqis. For me, it's a very symbolic image uh, about power, like how people are attracted to, but at the same time, uh, 
try to maintain a safe distance from the center of power. There's something about it, uh, the, the composition of this, uh, this cross and the oval really uh, struck me. The original news picture was very little. This is a very small image uh, in the paper. So this is ink and wash on rice paper. And we have a, a, a canvas version um, in the show. This is much bigger. Uh, we'll take a look. Uh, that piece uh, is also rather loose and painted, reflecting the ways I would paint, I would paint a uh, ink on rice paper painting. Next. I always see these two pieces as sort of sister pieces, you know, the tank and the, the helicopter. So the image of uh, uh, this ocean of faceless crowd as if the, the, the mass, you know, the people, uh, I mean, ordinary people, uh, really don't count for anything if you look at history. And I, I, um, I always like to quote uh, two lines from a Chinese poet, Xi Chuan. Um, history only records a few people's great deeds. The voices of the majority merge into silence. That's what he writes. And I think that's, that's great. I once, uh, in an exhibition, I once uh, used his, these two lines on the Yanwei Wall. Next. And I, I just want to stop a second to refer back to the video I did in 2001. Uh, you know, that's the first time I've used images of big crowds. You know, it's you know, an ocean of darts, uh, insignificant individuals. And so for that video, if you look at it, I, I would like to explain the context a little bit. It was taken in 2000, June the 4th, 2000. Uh, June the 4th, uh, in Chinese we say Liu Si. Uh, it's, it stands for Tiananmen, the 18, uh, 1989 uh, tragedy. Uh, so it's always a sensitive, very sensitive uh, date. But uh, on June, the night of June the 4th, continue to, to June the 4th, there was a huge popular concert in southern China, in Santo, which I witnessed. And uh, I could not forget the huge uh, crowd in Beijing uh, in 189. And I look at these dark crowds gathering at the stadium uh, for, the, for the rock concert. Uh, the images are very similar, the meanings are totally different. In my mind, cannot get over my memory. So I made a video about the crowd that is actually not political, but it appeared to be uh, ominous anyways. So um, that's what the video is about. It all, of course, it, really, it, it, it is related to the Flex and Venus installation. Next. And uh, back to the exhibition, Etch and Scenes, uh, 201 to 207. Uh, this is the last painting you will see at the, the third space of the Coast Gallery. Um, shows a um, U.S. soldier uh, arriving uh, at a uh, U.S. Uh, uh, military base in Germany after a deadly bombing in Baghdad. Um, the original picture is a lot of blue and green, so I, I subdue all the colors, except uh, the glow of orange and red. Uh, so I'm giving this nightmarish kind of uh, feel. Uh, on top, did you notice that face of a um, um, military uh, medical uh, personnel? Um, for me, there's some, something symbolic about that figure. Is this Mr. Death? Next. Okay, now, um, the, what I have to uh, uh, talk about is pretty much related to the show, and uh, I'm going to just share with you very briefly uh, new projects I've done. Uh, last year. So uh, in the summer last year, I, I did a site-specific installation for an architectural firm in Shanghai. The firm is very much interested in art as well. Uh, so I, I turned the, the uh, first floor of the build, uh, their building into an installation work. Um, it's the corridor of memory. Next. So this is the, the glass corridor leading to the library room, library reading room of the architectural firm. So you walk in through the, the entrance hall and you 
you have to follow this hall, and at the end of it, you turn left, you go into the library. So my work is based on this specific context. So on, the, on each glass panel, I, I hang a, a TV screen, and each displays images of books uh, tumbling and flying in the air, slowly in warm, like yellowish light. Uh, between the glass panel and the yard, the, the wall of the yard, uh, of the courtyard, um, I use a uh, lot of old books to fill up the gap at to the same level, kind of like, you know, you fill up a gap with water. And so you get a, this, uh, uh, this is kind of a prelude uh, to the gap, to the library. You have static books there, outside, old, dated, uh, from the recycle company recycle companies, and then you have these flying books in the air, and so there's a sequence leading to the reading room next. That's each pen. Okay, so at the end, you uh, to the right, then it's the real library, which is also a, a glass box. And you can see the books uh, between the, the, to the left, like, between the glass panel and the wall, next. So that, and what I did on the, um, this is what I did um, uh, in the library room. Uh, I mounted transparencies of uh, local newspapers, uh, both sides of them. Like uh, the, the, the one side, the front side of paper on this side, the back side of paper on the other side, so that I overlap like in those paintings I did, both sides now. But it's more transparent in this case. And uh, I chose, uh, local newspapers that reflect um, some controversial issues during the past few months. And so you will have uh, some big events too. Uh, so light has to penetrate this uh, uh, media, I mean the uh, uh, transparency of newspapers to enter the reading room or the, the study. Next. Okay, that's a, a view at night when the, light, the reading room becomes a glowing light box. Um, in the middle, uh, there's a section of newspaper showing the, the, this um, news image and an article uh, discussing uh, a lot of suicide cases in the company in southern China. I don't know if you've heard of it or not. It's one of the biggest companies in Guangzhou, in Guangzhou or in Shenzhen, actually, uh, where uh, suicide happened over and over again among the young employees. That was very disturbing news. And then to the right, you see uh, Hu Jintao making a speech, and then the uh, fireworks for the, uh, the Shanghai Expo. So there's some connection to the uh, the local uh, events. Next. Uh, so in the later in the fall, I, I did a solo to a chamber's fine art, and I showed some of those newspaper paintings and recent Chinese library paintings. And one thing I did that is different is a, a video installation called Transients. Uh, next. Uh, we built a, a wall of books using real books. Uh, and then, this is a side view. And then uh, I presented a video image of uh, books flying in the air uh, in slow motion. Uh, and the video image is slightly distorted and disturbed by the pattern of the books. Because no matter how hard you try to make it an even surface, uh, it's still an uneven kind of. Uh, uh, surface is not, is not perfectly flat. Uh, next. These are installation views. And the last thing I'm going to sh show is a, uh, a video clip. It's sort of a video, uh, a sketch for a video I'm working on, it's work in progress, of uh, uh, called Transients. The real video is going to be uh, about 12 minutes or so. And uh, this is a, a five, six minute sketch with some technical imperfection, so you have to bear with Excuse me. Uh, yeah, that's the one.
And if we can control sound, don't make the sound too loud, make it kind of moderate, medium.